Hello? Yep. All right. Thank you all for waiting. Uh, we had some minor technical issues, and they turned out to be slightly more than minor. But it's all good now, and I am delighted to welcome you all into the hall and bring on Mod Mark, who is going to deliver all of the awesome updates that we have coming in RuneScape. You've already heard everything that Old School are planning for the next 12 months, and there are some incredible pieces that you'll get the chance to play. And now we're going to say what's available in RuneScape. Can you please shout and roar for Mod Mark? Hello, everyone. I hope everyone is having an amazing RuneFest and that you've had a chance to check out the beta for RuneScape Mobile. Now, for those of you that don't know, right now, um, well, for those of you at home, I should say, because obviously all of you have been up there playing it, uh, right now we've got Old School and RuneScape running on a mobile, giving our mega fans here at RuneFest the first chance to play their proper real accounts via a mobile device. Now, this joy will be coming to everybody very soon, with Old School being accessible later on this year, and RuneScape following shortly after in 2018. It's really a new age of connectability, giving you the chance to play your favorite game anywhere you like, and stay in contact with your friends anywhere you want. But importantly, this has inspired us to line up a pretty crazy rest of 2017, and a very exciting bunch of new updates for 2018 which I'd like to talk to you about now. Now, as Mod Osborne told us earlier on in the year, and actually, it's really sad that he's not here today. The event's really not the same without him. So, Dave, if you're at home listening, I hope your family get better soon. We love you. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> As he told us earlier on in the year, our main focus right now is unfinished business. But what does that mean? So it's all about giving you the things that you really want, uh, the things that we've talked about in the past, uh, the promises that we've made to you, and we want to deliver those things. However, life is pretty boring if you know exactly what's around the corner. We've also said previously that we'll continue making updates that have the capacity to surprise and delight you. Things that you never knew you wanted until they've been part, become part of your RuneScape lives, like Dungeoneering, which came second to Slayer in the recent survey of most favorite skill in the game. Now, while I know there's plenty of you that keep telling me it's a mini game and not a skill, <laughs> um, you certainly really seem to like it, even years after its launch. The surprise, the wow factor, the social gameplay, the fundamentally different mood that you approach that sort of gameplay with is part of its success. So it's up to us to keep a good mix of those old promises, shiny new updates, secrets, and the things that you want more than anything. And the updates I'm going to talk to you about hopefully hit that right mix. Of course, we need your feedback to make them as good as they can be. We know that together, we're at our strongest. And we ran another massive survey back in the summer. So throughout this, I'll be sharing some of those results with you from the survey and show you how they've shaped, helped, the um, helped shape the future. It's important to note that every single update I'm going to talk to you about, uh, that fan is not doing good things to this book. Um, every single update I'm going to talk to you about now in this first, first section is something that we're actively working on now. These are real updates hitting the game within the next six months. So very much falling into the unfinished business section and receiving a very strong mention when I first talked about it was a clue scroll rework. Excellent. Unprompted cheers. That's always good. Uh, so last year, it was the ninth most wanted update, and it's finally coming this winter. And it's a pretty chunky update. We'll be introducing a new master tier of clue scrolls to satisfy the greatest, of, uh, the greatest level of scroll hunters. Of course, there'll be some unique rewards as well in these caskets. So let's take a quick look at them now. First up is a mega rare sure to be of interest to the merchants out there, and that is some Second Age outfits. 
Now these are based on the kind of gear that you might have seen back when the gods first showed up and Zaros's empire was at its strongest. But as you can see, this is pretty heavily inspired and influenced by Saradomen. And most RuneScape historians seem to forget the fact that Saradomen was a pretty major player back in the Second Age, with his followers very, wearing gear very similar to this. And next up, let's hope this plays, is a cosmetic override similar to Aura's that, well, set your swords on fire. <laughs> it can be applied to all swords, even those on your offhand slot. You can also see the new ice die here. You should be able to. Hey, hey, excellent. You can also see the new ice die capable of making your precious gear look even more shiny. Pretty cool. Do you like that? Yeah, flaming swords are nice. We've also got a unique clue scroll outfit that will help you solve the puzzles that they contain. A perfect outfit for the adventurer types out there, and it's certainly one of my favorites. We're also adding a collection log for all the scrolls that you complete after the launch, so you can see just how you've done over time. Now, we're still planning to do the cool reward footprints that I talked about last year, but this needs some pretty complex work that I, my poor little brain couldn't hope to understand. And it will take a while before we're able to do that as we prioritize other projects, but it is coming. We won't be neglecting the lower tiers of Clue Scrolls either. We've got several improvements underway across all tiers, not least a wide-scale rebalance of rewards to make them all more valuable and more worth your time. And we'll also be taking a leaf from the old school book and adding stash locations for you all, uh, which, which will allow you to store Clue Scroll-specific outfits and gear to help you solve, solve the pesky outfit puzzles. And we're changing the limitations to how many scrolls and caskets you can hold at any one time. Meaning that you can do those cool opening 100 casket videos that you've been wanting to do for ages. <laughs> now back when EOC first launched, the offhand weaponry was one of the coolest things about it. And at that time, we talked about ways for skillers to benefit from that offhand slot. We did a bit of that with the catalyst fragments. Uh, which is the reward from Cisco's endgame. But really, that was just the start. Sadly, you let us know that dual-wielding pickaxes was a bit silly. <laughs> and we wouldn't want anything silly in RuneScape, would we? Yes, I'm talking about you, you crazy shark hats. We will be adding more skilling offhand items, which will come in the form of magical relics. Each relic... Has it? Oh, do you want to cheer that one? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, good, good. Oh, that was prompted, though. That didn't work so well. You'll have to be quicker next time. Each relic has a theme attached to it, like a sacrifice theme that damages you or even kills you in return for even more buffs, or a restoration theme that buffs your skilling potions or regrows locations, or a time theme to help you AFK more complex training methods, or an elemental theme, even a destruction theme to annihilate the resources that you gather for alternative rewards. Now, each relic and the catalyst fragment can be augmented with the invention skill to allow you to add skilling perks, and will give set effects for skilling outfits when used with the appropriate gear. So this update will give skillers another edge to their training. And we'll be adding more offhand skilling items in the future, even a special heroic elven item with some associated lore and quest-like content. Oh, cool. Like elves? People like elves? Good. So skilling offhands are planned to be added to some other older pieces of content to enrich their drop tables and give you more reason to return to some beloved but neglected areas of the world. Now, if you're anything like me, you love a beer festival. And actually, the night before party was a bit of a crazy beer festival for most of us. Um, now, right now, our German players in Munich have got the perfect excuse for not being here. They're busy celebrating Oktoberfest, which is the greatest beer festival in the world, and is the inspiration for the next update that I want to talk about. So... <laughs> So 
Since the beginning of time, Lumbridge has seen its fair share of action. Be it goblins in, goblin invasions, birthdays, restless ghosts, warring gods, prawn bosses, or sandcastle contests. But it's time to forget all that and raise a glass to Novtomba. Novtom... No, I always struggle with that. Why do we make such crazy names for things? I don't know. Raise a glass to Novtomberfest, the first Alana annual Gillanor Beer Festival. It's the ultimate in Bavarian celebrations as we lock arms with Alfred Grimhand over 15 and a half years since the original Barbarian bar crawl. It's a huge party in the Lumbridge Crater, complete with table dancing and a brand new crawl across the world. You'll also be able to try um, table dancing. And uh, I said that. <laughs> Ow. Oh, this is, the, this is the exciting bit. You'll also be able to try out a brand new seasonal mini game called Kegger, where you'll be practicing your bartending skills for some epic loot. Thigh slapping outfits, huge tankards, wool patingas, barrel pets, dance emotes, and we'll chuck in a bit of XP in there too. Novtomberfest is the best way to relax after a heavy XP session. So get stuck in, because there's really not long to wait for that one. So, skilling pets were also in last year's polls. <laughs> Reaching the top 10. So let's uh, take a look at what these new combat skill pets will look like when they come out this year. So all these concepts are based on player suggestions and designs. And it looks like there's some childhood Pokemon love creeping in there from some of the artists. Um, but I really love that kangaroo. There's also these two page pieces of player-made artwork, so good that our concept team couldn't really improve them. And they're concepts that focus on ranging. And constitution. So, oh no, there's not, not, not a constitution fan there. Another big update this year related to quests and which storylines. <laughs> this time, these guys over here, they don't care about quests too much. So it was very quiet then. You like quests? It's good. You like some quests? All right, good. That's better. I like it. Um, and which storylines you'd like us to work on next? So the majority of you wanted us to finish fifth age storylines with almost 60% of the vote. And of those fifth age storylines, gnomes, pirates, and slayer stories narrowly came out in the top three, but it's pretty close. So after scanning the horizon for seagulls and checking under the bed for zombie heads, we decided to do that the pirate quest would be the next thing that we work on. So, as you can see, this is called Pieces of Hate, and it's a fitting finale for Rabid Jack. An investigation into horrificness with crazy puzzle solving and crazy madness, jokes, rum-soaked sailors, filled with nostalgia and packed full of nautical action. It seems that the Crassian sea creatures and krakens have been roped into part of Rabid Jack's plans. And you'll find yourself exploring ex-dragonkin temples underwater using your trusty diving gear and more besides. And of course, your cross-dressing zombie head friend, and I reckon I'm the first person to string those particular words together, um, has plenty of secrets to divulge, leading you to reunite the pirate captains and Take down Rabbit Jack forever. Yarr! Arr! And of course, don't forget we've got the Evil Dave quest coming out too. So look out for some. Oh, oh. So pleased, so pleased. There's love for Evil Dave. Um, so look out for some equally absurd combinations of words in that one. Now, often people forget that skilling activities are supposed to be fun. When we read comments on the forums, it always seems to be about XP return and rewards. Or at least, that's what it looked like. 
Surprisingly, the survey you filled in told us that actually fun was the most important thing to you guys when training skills. Well, that is music to our ears. And it fits in nicely with a five-year plan we have to make skilling more enjoyable. And part of that plan is to make content more sociable, more enjoyable when experienced with others. And the first update with that mantra is called Deep Sea Fishing. Now this is the spiritual successor to the fishing trawler. How many of you remember the fishing trawler? <laughs> or actually, I think we called it bucket skate back in the day. <laughs> now this update will see players catching boats with plenty of other players out into the ocean, sailing to different fishing hotspots that change weekly. Each spot has different effects and different sorts of gameplay available, meaning that you might end up with your favorite locations with the combination of features that are just right for you. The gameplay is far more frantic, similar to the trawler, and combining up with your friends will bring the greatest rewards. Now, you can, if you want, just tag along for the ride, because we've added some special net fish and chill spots for those of you that just want to kick back and watch. Now, the gameplay, I love that phrase. I'm happy with that one. Now, the, I hope they call it that in the game as well. Maybe, maybe I'll, well, anyway. The gameplay will bring multiple levels of player together, ensuring there's always a boat available when you fancy a dip. Now, of course, with more effort comes more XP. With the long-term plan to have effort and fun as a viable alternative to grind for every skill in the future. Another, another uh, skilling update that I want to talk about is safe cracking. So this is an expansion to the Thieves Guild. All oh, right, some Thieves Guild fans. You guys are just happy about everything. You're great. All right, I like you. you know, come, come every year. So yeah, a very interesting way of leveling up the most dastardly of skills. So you'll travel, to the, well, you'll travel across the world to the most lucrative castles and keeps, looting their treasuries and filling up your swag bag, dodging security and medieval alarm systems, then returning to the guild to fence your goods. Each treasury also holds legendary items, things so precious to the Thieves Guild that they want to display them for every up-and-coming rascal to see. Each legendary treasure acts as a perk for thieving, much like the prawn brokers or memorial to Guthics, and is worth a bucket load of XP and hanky points. In fact, there's a brand new tier of hanky points and the reward shop items available to the successful looters, helping you optimize further um, your thieving training with additional loot bags and better safe cracking techniques and all sorts of things that improve your other thieving methods as well. Now, this update targets thieves around level 65 to 95. But for those of you with 99 thieving already, and just put your hand up if you've got 99 thieving. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're totally doing this. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, you guys, the legendary thieves, will get a boost as soon as you arrive because, well, you're awesome. <laughs> so back to the survey then. We asked you how much you cared about Slayer to 120, and how much you wanted those gaps to be filled. And actually, over 70% of you said yes, please, even those who didn't even have the levels yet wanted it to happen. In fact, you told us that slaying mobs was your favorite sort of content in the game, with bossing coming second, and far ahead of minigame combat or PvP. In fact, Slayer was, by far, the most popular skill overall. I mean, look at that. That's great. Oh, look, I can use my pointer. Ooh. I always wanted to do that. Uh, yeah, crazy. Like, absurdly popular. What? It doesn't add up. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a very good point, actually. <laughs> So, like, so if you just ignore those numbers at the bottom and you just look at it like a sexy bar graph, it's much better. It's because there's more than nine skills in the game. There is indeed more than nine skills in the game. Well done, you. <laughs> so, as you can see, uh, Slayer was by far the most popular skill. 
uh, this felt like the perfect opportunity to bring together those unfinished promises of new lands to explore. The current need for Slayer mobs and to bring something new and special to the table. So ladies and gentlemen, I bring to you the Lost Grove. This occupies over 10 map squares, which is even bigger than Priftinus. The Lost Grove is an island off the coast of the west of the game world, accessible from the poison swamps. Imagine, if you will, a dark, thick canopy over an ancient forest, older than the elf woods or the spirit trees. At its center sits a huge, magnificent oak with its roots so deep, they entwine the heart of the planet, tapped directly into and very much part of the anima. <laughs> Various creatures call this place home, like fairies and wisps. But for now, let's concentrate on these bark-clad badasses. Now, whilst they've got a kind of cute look about them, they're far from it. Sitting proudly at 104, 106, and 108 Slayer, these critters, which each sit on a point on the combat triangle, are part of the Grove, and will be in-game next week. <laughs> now, these guys are in part inspired by the old moss giants, which were released back in 2001. And each has its own unique challenge. Now, the unique drop from these guys are going to be the Cinderbane gloves, which are some cracking new hybrid gloves that sit at tier 85. They can apply a basic poison in combat, which can be enhanced by other means. Now, obviously, a massive area like that is going to have more content in it than just some mobs, right? Well. We're adding a few more things for you to discover while you explore the place, like a new weekly D&D focused around farming and hunter skills. And then there's this guy, our brand new boss monster, Solak. Solak, that's just a picture. Solak is this, I'm just going to put the picture on because I really like that. Now, Solak is this year's vicious new boss monster, following in the giant footsteps of Telos and Virago, and strongly associated with the anima, just like them. As if the anima is assembling some kind of super team of its greatest warriors for the world-ending fights to come. Solak will be the toughest boss monster on launch. Adding, added to the game slightly after the Slayer mobs, targeting groups of up to seven people. Now, I know we say it will be tough, but we're aiming to kill thousands of you. I want to kill at least all of you guys. <laughs> Love you too. <laughs> now, you will die lots. The battle will be insane, requiring the best teamwork and coordination since raids, needing to master a completely different approach to boss fighting. Now, he's an, a huge albeit unwilling guardian of Guthics, who defends the islands from those that want its power. Now, back in the Second Age, Seren sent a group of elite elf warriors to help in this divine task, with betrayal leading to one of those elves being consumed by Solak and the island disappearing into the mists of time. Over four ages have passed since that fateful fight, with Solak now both guardian and twisted elf spirit. Your job is to split that infectious mental parasite and restore Solak. Now, with the fight itself, we're going for a different vibe than normal, with Solak performing new sub-attacks rather than the standard boss affair. And after a set number of sub-attacks, he moves on to his next phase, performing specific steps that must be stopped, growing in power if not. You'll find yourself battling up in the canopy, down on the forest floor, and around the giant tree itself, with both players and Solak using the environment to their advantage during the fight. Each phase, oh, just so you know, the player, I think, comes up just under his knee. Yes. 
Each phase has a more narrative feel to it than normal fights, with individual members of the player team being called out to beat the challenge at different points in the fight. And this means that each player has a role, handling various different buffs and stacks of their own, with less focus on tank and spank, and more on the evolving team nature of the fight. Another key phrase there. You'll even have to target different sections of Solak, managing multiple health bars, and as his arms and legs and body become revealed during the fight. Just gonna get... Sorry? Can I describe his appearance? Regard the screen. Uh, come up here. Come on. Over there. I've got a great screen just here. No, he's missed his chance for fame. Um, where was I? We've also got a special duo mode available for those of us who like to battle with just one buddy. And the fight has plenty of unique rewards on offer too. Uh, drops like the new tier 92 dual wield crossbows with special ammo also available from the Slayer Monsters on the island. And, and a brand new boss pet as well. And now I know that tricky combat isn't to everyone's cup of tea, so we're also making some pretty bold changes to revolution mode for those of you who prefer the easy life. So check out the combat talk later on in the day for more information on that. Now the next update we're going to talk about will go back to the polls. Now you told us you wanted to see more unique game modes following on from the dead man mode that proved so popular in old school, continues to prove popular, and the experimental Darkscape that we tried a few years ago. Now, Clan Darkscape, this is the bit for you, right? The poll saw global quests and PVM survival modes come out on top. So we've taken that as inspiration and developed something called Dimension of the Damned. Play video. is the mention of the dams, which is available to both free-to-play and members. So this is a new cooperative game mode which will see you controlling a special maxed out version of your character in a version of the world where everyone is dead. Taking place in the free area, you'll find yourself based in Falador, in a dark, ominous, parallel universe, where beyond the city walls, zombies spawn everywhere. You'll need to defend yourself from these abominations as you gather the raw materials that you need to kick yourself out in the best gear that you can muster with different zombie types, including boss monsters designed for fights with up to 10 people plaguing your every step. Now you can set up little barricades like the ones in Castle Wars to protect you and your friends while skilling or even use them to grief your fellow zombie hunters. You can get power-ups and unique equipment from those bosses, racking up points as you kill your enemies. And these points can be used to buy loot boxes from Falador. And the players with the highest points earn a special invitation to the unique endgame. So this two-hour endgame, which takes place on the final weekend of Dimension of the Damned, which is planned to happen in October this year, features a permadeath mode and a freshly wiped score. Players with the lowest scores are eliminated over time, the world growing smaller and smaller, with more enemies spawning, until finally one player remains, earning unique prizes at the end. 
Now, this is designed to be a new player-friendly experience as well, with accounts, obviously, all at max level. So it's the perfect time to team up with those low-level buds, even brand new RuneScape players, since the whole update is completely free. In fact, we've got the perfect update if it's team gameplay that you're after. Something a bit different, straight out of Tony Stark's basement. It's a group Iron Man update. Now, whilst being an Iron Man is the ultimate challenge beyond those crazy level three pures, it's a solitary life. Never, never able to run those five-man dungeons or join in with boss fights. Well, now you can. Make some brand new accounts and get together with your Iron Mates working as a team, able to interact fully with each other, trading, playing, fighting, socializing to your heart's content. So that is all the content that we've got in development right now. Updates you can expect to see in the next six months. That's not spin. That's not empty promises. Trust me. This is real, actual content that you'll be playing with very soon. So what haven't we talked about? Well, the biggest unfinished business is perhaps the bank rework. <laughs> don't cheer. Don't cheer just yet. It's still, I know, I'm sorry, it's still one of our top priorities, and genuinely, we are very sorry that you haven't got hold of it yet. Hand on heart is something that we've woefully underestimated, and it's important for us to be honest with you. The work involved with the bank stuff is involving several teams across multiple products. We want it so much, but we refuse to give you something half-baked, because you don't want that. It needs to be done properly, and I'm sorry, but for that, we're going to have to wait. Now, perhaps the same can be said for mining and smithing. We share your pain. We want that to be the best it can be, and you've told us quite clearly in the latest in-game poll that anything other than a complete rework just won't do. Oh, no. <laughs> Excitingly, I can reveal that proper development work has finally started on mining and smithing last week. We're done talking about it, so we're just going to do it. Now, we want to be even more ambitious than that, some of the, more ambitious than some of the things that I've been talking about here. We're still dreamers at heart, dreaming of the perfect RuneScape. We're busy experimenting. We haven't forgotten about weather, but we've taken it in a slightly different direction, playing around with ambitious projects like day-night cycles and the gameplay that that might bring instead. We're always playing around with new ideas, like letting you become a Slayer Master, issuing tasks to NPCs, earning points based on how successful your students are. We're even playing around with new boss monsters beyond Solak, like what it might be like to destroy a demon king from the inside. There's plenty of other ideas that we're tinkering around with at the moment, not least some pretty crazy quests as we consider the ominous future of the Elder Gods. And you'll have to watch the law talk later on in the circus tent if you're hungry to know more. But let's not create more unfinished business by talking too far ahead. Well, apart from one thing, perhaps our biggest ambition is with clans. Now, 70% of you, I'm pretty sure the stats are right on that one, 70% uh, of you are members of a clan. And while it's not something that we're working on today, it's something the whole studio wants to see in development for 2018. We want RuneScape to be more social. And if it's the five-year five plan with skills becoming more social is the tip of that iceberg, then the clan content is the bulk of that action. We know that we can make individual updates more social, and plenty of the updates that I've talked about have that in spades. But across the existing game, we want you to benefit from each other's company, especially in clans. We dream of clan benefits being more than just an XP buff, with the capacity to welcome noobs in a meaningful, beneficial way. We want high-level players to be proud of their clan sigil and make clans easier to manage and organize for their clan leaders. We challenged every single one of our staff to think in a more social way to be more player obsessed than we currently are, to make a game we can all be proud to call home together.
Thanks very much.